What is the most successful theory or framework in physics? If you Google this, you'll find just about what you'd expect. Quantum mechanics, the theory of relativity, quantum electrodynamics, or perhaps the standard model of particle physics. So this is a super subjective question. What we usually mean when we ask this question is what is the best framework or theory to describe microscopic physics or the most fundamental physics. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my favorite framework um, in physics and that is statistical mechanics. Instead of studying things as we probe the universe at higher energy levels or smaller structures, today we're going to talk about the framework that allows us to understand matter in bulk. And the important thing here is that this framework works regardless of what your microscopic theory is. So for example, it's extremely successful in applying classical mechanics uh, to problems with many, many classical particles. But it works equally as well um, if quantum mechanics and quantum effects are also important for the problem and the property you're interested in. So statistical mechanics gives us an understanding or a framework to go from microscopic physics to macroscopic physics. So when I say microscopic, you might immediately think of something like solving Newton's laws of motion. This system might have a large number of particles interacting in various ways. So statistical mechanics is interested in studying a lot of these particles, obeying some type of microscopic theory, and reducing the overall complexity of studying all of these microscopic particles to just a few numbers. The important numbers in this context turn out to be things like the energy, the total number of particles, uh, the volume of the system that the particles are contained in, or similarly we might be interested in the temperature, the pressure, and something called the chemical potential. The only thing this framework really needs um, is a lot of particles. The microscopic theory, whether it's quantum mechanics or it's classical mechanics, is really an input to the framework. To see the strength of statistical mechanics, all you need to do is look at something like the ideal gas law. This was a law that was initially discovered um, empirically for the behavior of gases. So you have PV, pressure times the volume, is equal to the number of particles N times the Boltzmann constant times temperature. This is a result that you can derive with statistical mechanics in both the classical and quantum mechanical frameworks. Another really interesting result is, for example, um, in a gas, the average kinetic energy of a particle is given to you by the equipartition theorem. The statistical mechanics is also the framework um, and theory we use to describe phase transitions of materials. So what is statistical mechanics? How do we accomplish this? What is the approach that we take uh, when we study this? What we do is we introduce probability theory to physical problems. So instead of describing all of the microscopic constituents at once, uh, we instead talk about the average behavior of the particles. Usually this is done in equilibrium. So all of this might sound a little vague, but the idea here is that if you were to perform an experiment, the average behavior that you should observe should be well described by a physically motivated probability distribution. So why the probability? Why do we even need to do this? The microscopic laws of nature, of course, um, describe reality, right? Why can't we just solve uh, Newton's equations of motion? Why can't we just solve the Schrodinger equation? So if we were to try to describe uh, generally three bodies in motion, say three classical particles, so what we would find is that in a lot of cases, uh, this problem is actually unsolvable. You cannot do this by hand. Now keep in mind when we are doing statistical mechanics or we want to describe matter in bulk, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to describe systems with on like sometimes on the order of 10 to the 23 uh, particles or bodies in motion. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, but it's not a problem you're going to be able to solve by hand, and it's a problem that classical computers are going to start struggling with uh, very, very quickly. So statistical mechanics allows us to analytically uh, treat these problems and produce uh, results um, that accurately predict the outcome of experiments. Also, what we find in statistical mechanics is that a lot of times 
a big chunk of the microscopic information that you might track while you solve the equations of motion um, actually isn't important um, at the end of the day for the end result or um, the answer to the problem that you're looking for for matter in bulk. So why am I talking about uh, this framework of statistical mechanics um, as potentially uh, one of, if not the most successful theories in physics? Well, just about um, every field in physics, every physicist in uh, physics will use statistical mechanics in one way or another um, to do their research. That would be either directly or indirectly. So for example, the largest field in physics is called uh, condensed matter physics. And at its core, it relies on statistical mechanics. If you were to open up a textbook on condensed matter physics, what you'll notice is that right from the beginning, uh, we are assuming knowledge of statistical mechanics, the validity of statistical mechanics, and so on. And of course, this is probably the easiest area of physics to point towards um, applications of physics research. So for example, think of semiconductors, uh, solid state drives, conductors, insulators, and of course, uh, many, many more. So statistical mechanics allows us to understand things that perhaps at face value uh, seem very simple, but mathematically they are fundamentally untreatable um, without some type of framework like statistical mechanics. So you could think of something like the solid liquid gas uh, phase transitions for something like a system like water. From an everyday human perspective, I mean, this is really simple. We observe this every time we, for example, uh, freeze water to make ice cubes or boil water um, to perhaps prepare our coffee. Um, but you're not going to describe uh, this type of phenomena without a framework like statistical mechanics uh, because it wouldn't be possible to start from Newton's laws of motion or potentially um, the Schrodinger equation um, to, to study these things. Like you, you, need, you need statistical mechanics for this. And for those of you saying, well, you know, we have thermodynamics and, and things like this, I guess I'm approaching this from the perspective of you go from the microscopic theory, and then to justify something like thermodynamics, you need the intermediate step of statistical mechanics. So statistical mechanics builds on top of a microscopic theory and gives you the tools that you need um, to study uh, many constituent uh, degrees of freedom um, inside of uh, this theory. So statistical mechanics is quite literally um, everywhere. You'll see it in the description of stars, or for example, uh, to things like how uh, the engine in your car works. So from this perspective, I'm pitching that it's perhaps the most uh, useful theory of physics. And so interestingly, um, even with all of its applications, it's also a playground for foundational uh, conversations and arguments um, and questions. So there are still big questions um, to answer in the foundations of statistical mechanics. So big questions uh, in statistical mechanics could be as philosophical as what is this probability that we are working with? Uh, what, do, what is its physical interpretation? Does it have a physical interpretation? How does statistical mechanics actually emerge from the dynamics of the microscopic theory? Statistical mechanics uh, primarily is an equilibrium uh, theory. And there are a few more, and we'll definitely touch on these um, as the videos go on. But statistical mechanics is um, a framework that you see absolutely everywhere. It has a lots of applicability, and it also has sort of an awesome um, set of open questions uh, from like a foundational perspective um, as well. So why am I making this video right now? Well, when I first started this channel, um, I initially intended to go through the topics of thermodynamics and statistical mechanics sort of systemically. And then I sort of uh, got away from that. Uh, I started making topics on things that just interested me uh, at the time. So I'd like to fill in the gaps uh, for the channel and sort of follow um, maybe a more traditional approach uh, to teaching statistical mechanics, uh, but from my own perspective. So this will be my own sort of course layout. It's not really a course. Uh, but at my own uh, video series that will take you from start to finish, you know, from foundations of statistical mechanics to uh, 
perhaps the Landau theory of phase transitions. And so this, this video here will service as uh, the first sort of introduction uh, video uh, to that lecture series. So the structure of these lectures and what I'm going to talk about in what order um, is uh, from myself, but you can find source material, for example, um, in the description. I always recommend uh, two different uh, textbooks, which you can check out um, down below. Um, and if you were going to follow along uh, with these uh, with these lectures um, or these videos and you want a place uh, to discuss them, uh, you can always join uh, my channel's uh, uh, Discord channel. There's lots, there's lots to chat about if you're confused about a concept or you want to talk about a concept. Um, it's definitely a place uh, to be. Um, it's also uh, a place where you can ask uh, important questions for early researchers. I think, uh, you know, applying to grad school or, you know, common questions for PhD, master's students, applying to postdocs, you know, things like this. I'll also create a special uh, text channel specifically uh, for this series. Uh, but with that, uh, that's the end of the video. I hope to see you in the next video. And if you did like the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.